Hi. This is my recording for some of the notes that I have taken while reading this particular book, C++ Premier Plus Edition. I'm somebody who already knows C Sharp and Java, and I know C, and it's been a while, but it's been a while, and a little bit of C++, but it's been a while that I've programmed in C or C++. So this was me trying to quickly get ramped up on C++ so I can start programming. My videos also are very similar. They are not they are not for somebody who knows programming already, uh, who who does not know programming. They are somebody for who already knows programming and wants to and knows C and quickly wants to ramp up on C++. Maybe he has forgotten. Maybe he or she has forgotten or something like that. Okay, uh, let's begin. So I'm just going to. I have already read the book, the first ten chapters of the book, and I'm just going to go over it, the highlighted points, things that I. Uh, found interesting and you know that were kind of relevant for me. Uh, some history about the language, okay. Uh, the idea of you know this is something that has always been spoken about that you need to worry about the data, you need to worry about how you deal with the data. That is the algorithms and the programmers' data plus algorithms. Okay, so C plus plus we all know it's about was ob ob object-oriented programming, and we'll see what that meant. You know, so standards. Yes, a little bit about that. Okay, so the mechanics. So let's. What what happens when you actually create a C++ program? So you write the source code, you compile, you get the object code, then you go through the linker that gets the library code and produces an executable. And once you have this executable, you can give this execu executable to somebody else, and they can run this your code. So that's the basic idea. So the source so the first file is this the first portion is the source file. So depending on various you know whether it's Unix or Microsoft Visual C++, these are the possible uh, extensions of your C++ file name. I would say just use C CPP or CXX because that seems to be uh, you know the most common one across uh, uh, all the platforms. I would say CXX CXX seems to be the uh, lowest co common de denominator, but CP, my, you know, if you're using Microsoft Visual C++, typically you'll end up creating CPP files, but CXX are also okay. So what happens when you compile, the compiler automatically passes the object code file to the system linker, a program that combines your code with the library code to produce an executable file. By default, the executable file is called a.out. And the it or and the object file is called you know something dot o okay so that is the with the and it will delete the dot o file when you will need the dot o file is when you're let's say trying to uh, when somebody has already compiled their program and you need to use their code to produce your executable you can do something like this and then in that case you will probably need the dot o extension. And then it's all about compiling and linking. Okay, so this is important. Because the programs in the book are generic, you should avoid choices that require platform specific code such as Windows application. Okay, so don't create a Windows application. Create create something that you know create a console based app. Don't create a Windows application because it may not run if you move from Microsoft to Unix or something like that. So so that's the basic thing you want to do. You want to create the Win32 console application an empty project and you kind of build it from there. So once again the steps are compile, build or make and okay so these are the various steps that are then in Microsoft Visual Studio and there's also something for the Mac. Summary. Okay now let's this chapter talks about the first uh, you know your first C++ program and uh, you know there's some of the ma main things that you need to deal with. So this is so the things that you will worry about is so include IO stream. So as you can see, there is typically you will not do a IO stream dot H or anything like that. You'll just do include IO stream, and then in that particular header file, you'll say which are the namespaces you want to use. So what you can do is inside your function, this is the main function, but it can be any other any function for that matter. You can say include 
namespace standard. In that case, these are objects that are defined in the standard namespace. So you can directly use cout and cin, and you don't have to, else what you'll have to do is you have to do standard colon colon cout and stuff like that. Okay, so we already spoke about that. Okay, so look at the, you know, so the main function. So the main function is kind of special because the compiler knows that, okay, the, when, you, when I run it, I'm, we need this particular function needs to be called. I, it's going to invoke this function, okay, and return zero. Okay, yes. So this is important. The general description is a bit confusing when you apply to main because normally you don't call main from other parts of the program. Typically, however, main is called by startup code that the compiler adds to your program to mediate the program and the operating system. In effect, the function header describes the interface between the main and the operating system. And so this is the C++ side, you can, you know, maybe explicitly say void. And if you return zero, it means that, okay, it did not have any error, everything passed. We know about the comments. Okay, the IO stream file. Okay, so this is important. This co we, we already spoke about this that uh, you know you add the contents of the IO stream file to your program. This is typical P processor action, adding or replacing text in the source before it's compiled. Okay, and these are the file naming conventions. When do you use a dot H or you know dot? So old style you will do a dot H. You can still do that, but the new style you don't require an H uh, and it uses the namespace standard, okay? Now here's the interesting thing, converted C, if there is a con if there is a header file in C that you want to use from C++, typically what you may do is, it has a C extension, and uh, so, sorry, C prefix, in this case it is C math dot C math, but once again, no extension, uh, and it is usable by C++ programs. You know, everything, e all, all these things can be used by C++ programs. C++ kind of, you know, by definition, by design, b maintains backward compatibility, so that, you know, people who were at that point of time knew C could easily jump over to C++. Okay, so this is the deal. If you use isteam instead of isteam.h, you should use the namespace directive to make the definitions in IOS team available to you for your program. And, you know, we know about this, that, okay, if somebody has the same method, let's say, bond uh, defined, and the two namespaces, then you can explicitly classify or uh, resolve uh, the namespace and say, okay, use this method from that particular namespace, so on and so forth, that kind of option. Okay, that makes sense. And once again, if you don't do using namespace standard, then you can say using standard colon C out and standard colon and L and things like that. Okay, so what is C out? It's a predefined object that knows how to display a variety of things, including strings, etc. And we'll see later that C out and you know OS stream, etc. They are all uh, you know they, and file stream. They are all from a hierarchy of input and output stream classes and stuff like that. So to, just to be clear, it's an object. That's what it is in C++, you know, you are dealing with, you are actually dealing with an object. And as you can see here, this left shift operator is used to output stuff. And it is a first case, it's the first time if somebody doesn't, doesn't know about it, it's kind of, it's the operator overloading concept that the same operator can be overloaded or I would say overridden to do mean different things. So that's the idea here. For example, the AND operate app operator represents both the address symbol and the bitwise AND, correct? The asterisk represents both multiplication and referencing a pointer. So these are the kind of, you know, so C, what it meant is that C already had it. C++ made it very explicit about it. Okay, so the only thing is, yeah, you know, ENDL, guarantees if you you can do c out slash n or c out uh, endl end line the end, end line guarantees that the output will be flushed um, you know once again these are just some normal declarations um, you know yeah 
declare it when you go to use it as close as possible uh, just some general good guidelines we'll so in C out in C you will use printf and C++ you will use C out uh, C printf we'll see you know uh, should we use uh, do we still need to use printf or not but what you'll notice in all the pro coding exa code examples the authors use C out and I think that's probably the right thing to do but we should still know scanf and printf because most of the C program that you will end up reading you know most of the code uh, that you will end up using will use scanf and printf a lot and maybe not a lot of C out and C in just because you know people who started learning C kind of brought just kept using that those constructs that they were very familiar with so more you know simple statements okay now C out Okay, so this is the interesting thing. It's an object created to have the properties of output O stream, output stream class. The output output stream class definition describes us the sort of data an output stream object represents and the operations you can perform to it, such as inserting a number of strings into an output string and things like that. Similarly, C in is created with the objects of I stream class, also defined in the I O stream. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the header. If you remember, the, you know that's the header that we used at the start of the uh, uh, in the beginning of the program, right? Include IO stream. That's the one that you used. Functions. Okay, we know functions that are yeah. Okay. If you have function, interestingly, what uh, C with C plus plus, what you need to do is let's say you have the main typically defined at the start of the .cpp or .cxx file and you have some other functions beneath it and you want the main obviously to use those functions. In this case you will have to define the prototype or you can think of just the function definition for all these functions at the start of the program and we'll see examples of it. This is an example that you just say that hey I have a function called as square root it takes in a double and it returns a double note that you know the name with the variable name is optional and then you can use it in your main and then define it later okay that's the idea and you can have the define in the source code yourself or you can include the cmat or mat.ch header file which has the prototype on it you can do various things in this case you know if you have this if you in this case if you have already included it you do you can directly use it you don't need to you know define the uh, you don't need to define the prototype because what will happen is the moment it will include this C math, it will figure out that oh, this S square um, SQRT is part of the standard namespace which is from this header file. So it knows the compiler knows where, what to invoke in where to find that oh, the square the function square root does exist. So C++ allows you to declare new variables anywhere in the program, correct? Uh, assign a variable when you create it. Yes, okay, we, we, we kind of knew that already. Okay, so this is just as in, I, I quickly gloss over it, but just make sure that zero means the program ran successfully and non-zero means there is a problem, okay? So zero is successful and non-zero is even kind of the idea of the error code, a different error code. You can say one, two, three, and everything will be a different error code. So we spoke about using that you can, you know, it affects all functions in the file or you can put use using as expects, uh, specifically to a particular function. You can do whatever you would like, prefer, you know, it's your call. So, you know, so it's, yeah. you can, instead of you can also not choose to use using at all and do this something like this correct you can do this using x okay I just want to use this particular object and in that case you can still continue to use C out or you can just do std colon C out in that case you don't have any using whatsoever okay so we are done with the first two chapters of C++ uh, we will now um, and you know we we have we'll have subsequent videos for the remaining chapters thank you